Uh, now we're shifting our attention completely to the scorecard of Mr. President Muhammad Buhari. Uh, three years into his administration, and to do that, I have with me uh, data and information analyst Jide Ogunso. Thank you for joining us. Good morning. Now you have been looking at uh, the past three years of the present administration. How well have has have they performed? What were you able to deduce so far? You know, there's, there's several ways we could look at this, but. Because of what is going on, perhaps we should even look at the scorecard regarding leadership and age, the discussion of not too young to run. So we should start from that and let's look at what, what is really, really going on. When President Buhari came in in 1983, how old was he? He was only 41 years old. Now in simple terms, you could have been president of Nigeria, Gimba, mm -hmm. going by age. Obasanjo was only 38 years old when he was president. But again, we shouldn't make the mistake by focusing on age. Again, I've talked about this. Rather than we focus on not too young to run, it should be not too young to perform. It should be all about performance. We look at two of the rising presidential candidates today, Mr. Omoyele Shore and Mr. Feladrotwe. They are both closer to 50 than they are to 40. Professor Kingsley is also in his 50s. So yeah, so it can't be about age. Our focus should be about performance. Again, let's look at even what is going on in our region, West Africa. We should ask ourselves, Gimba, how many presidents in West Africa are in their 30s? How many presidents in West Africa are in their forties? The answer, none. The age distribution, if we want to focus on age, shows that there are only four presidents in West Africa that are even in their fifties. The president of Senegal, Gambia, Togo, and Georgia of Liberia. You have more presidents in their sixties. Seven of them, Gimba, are in their sixties. You've got another four presidents in West Africa who are in their 70s. Even President Buhari isn't the gang leader of West African presidents who are in their 70s. We've got Alpha Conde. He is the Alpha mm. because he is the president that is 80 year old of Guinea. So when we look at what is happening in, on our continent, we don't have 30 year olds or 40 year olds. We have more of 60 year olds. So again, it shouldn't be about Age, it should be about performance. We talk about the United States. Even though their constitution also allows them to have a 35-year-old president, never in the history of the United States have they had a president in their 30s. Their three youngest presidents, Theodore Roosevelt, John F. Kennedy, and Bill Clinton, were in their 40s. So when we look at the performance of a government, we should not focus on age. We should focus on their deliverables and actually the things they do. The not too young to run performance scorecard or we signing that into law distracts us from what is going on. It distracts us to the extent that it allows us to conclude that has democracy gone crazy in Nigeria? We're focusing on age rather than focusing on performance. We're focusing on age rather than focusing on performance. What we need to focus on is on the quality of education, which we are no longer doing. And that allows me to conclude that democracy has gone crazy. Let's look at what had happened three years into the Obasanjo presidency in 2002. What were the headlines? Now, if we focus on that, we'll see there are questions. There was a big question mark on education. Education had a question mark. Again, it was in 2002, three years into Obasanjo's presidency. May 29 was when we, we saw those headlines from the Punch newspaper then that Buhari mm -hmm. was going to be challenging Obasanjo. That was in 2002, three years into Obasanjo's presidency. Buhari had told Obasanjo that he wanted a seat. So are you really surprised now that three years into Buhari's presidency Obasanjo also does, President Obasanjo doesn't want President Buhari to remain on that seat. 
In the military dictionary, yes, they do forgive, but they don't forget. So we're seeing a replay of what had happened in 2002. And again, if you look at the headlines, three years into President Jonathan's era, 2014, we are now seeing trouble brewing. It was all about Boko Haram and the challenges of security. And that distracted us from our focus on education. Just three days ago, what were the airlines on Democracy Day? Again, it was about corruption from the allegations from the former INEC chairman. So we've seen within this democratic, this new democratic era, we focusing less on education and focusing more on corruption and focusing more on trying to manage security challenges. And that clearly even shows Gimba in the president's speech. We focus less on corruption. So the president had talked about the performance, the good performance on foreign reserves. He had talked about aviation sector and the activities the government was doing in the aviation sector. They had talked about the rail sector. In fact, the government had talked about in his speech, the, the president had talked about rice. And only after he talked about and mentioned all of these things, they didn't talk about education. And so education seems to have been taking, to be taking the role of a dessert after the main course. And as long as education plays the role of a dessert rather than the main course, then democracy has gone crazy.